Mandy is the newest chromatic brawler coming to Brawl Stars, and she is bringing a new Candyland environment with her. She will be available in January once the next season starts, and she's the owner of a candy shop called Mandy's Rainbow Candy, and she specifically stands behind the counter and sells most of the candy herself. Mandy also wears a crown and carries around a scepter as if she's a part of some sort of a magical candy kingdom. The fact that her employee, Chester, is a jester also adds to the possibility that they are in a candy kingdom. I think it's, I think it's pretty clear that that's what's going on here. I'm not sure if it's an actual kingdom and Mandy's really royalty or if it's just the theme of the candy shop. Either way, Mandy treats her customers as sweet as sugar, but it doesn't take much to get on her nerves and she can get fired up really fast. Sweet like candy! <laughs> Not. Mandy is my name. Sweetness ain't my game. Time for a lifesaver! I'll show the rest of her voice lines and pins at the end of this video. Mandy's candy attack is Candy Dispenser. The scepter I mentioned before is actually a candy dispenser, and Mandy uses it to shoot candy at her enemies. Apparently, it's really hard candy because it deals a lot of damage. Her attack already has some pretty decent range, but by standing completely still after a second or so, she increases her range by 33%. Every time Mandy stops moving, a bar will quickly begin to fill below her ammo bar, and the moment she starts moving, the bar will disappear. As long as that bar is fully charged, though, she is focused, and she can hit enemies from very far away. Mandy's super is Sugar Ray. She fires a wave of sugar that deals insane damage to anything it touches. Not only is the range of her super basically the length of the whole map, but nothing can stop it. It goes through walls, brawlers, pets, everything, so the only way to avoid getting hit by it is to get out of its way. Mandy's first gadget is Caramelize. Once this gadget is activated, her next attack will slow down whatever it hits for 2.5 seconds. She can only hit one target with her attack at a time which means the only one target can be slowed, and if you miss attack completely, the gadget will be wasted. Mandy's second gadget is Cookie Crumbs. This gadget also affects Mandy's next attack, but instead of slowing enemies down, the attack will pierce through anything just like her super well. It doesn't break through walls, but it does go through them as well as a bunch of enemies if they're all lined up. This attack will also charge her super with each separate hit, so it's great if you can hit more than one enemy at a time. Mandy's first star power is In My Sights. As long as Mandy is standing still with her her bar full, this star power increases the projectile speed of her main attack as well. Even though increased range means that you can hit targets at a safer distance, it does make them harder to hit, so this star power actually helps out with that. Mandy's second star power is Hard Candy. This star power also only affects Mandy if she is focused. While focused, this star power gives her a shield that prevents 20% of all damage she receives. She's obviously a really easy target while standing still, so this gives her a little bit more survivability while she's vulnerable. Now that you know Mandy's basics, it's time to see how good she is in the Brawl Stars Olympics, starting with her worst and work her way up to her best. First up is the Super Charge Test. Mandy requires five hits to charge her super, so she has to reload twice after unloading her first three shots in order to charge it all the way up. That takes 5.4 seconds, which puts her in 59th place and suggests she's not going to have her super charge up very often. Next, we have the Box Test. Unfortunately, Mandy can't use her super in the Box Test or else she'd have a major head start on every box. Her Cookie Crumbs gadget does help a lot in this test, so she uses it on the three large largest groups of boxes to make the most of them. Mandy breaks the boxes in 1 minute and 13 seconds, so she gets 57th place, and that suggests she's not very good at ramping up damage in Showdown. Next, we have the Boss Test. As we've previously seen, it takes Mandy quite a few seconds to charge up her first super, but her super deals tons of damage to the boss, and each hit she lands with her super recharges it halfway, so she starts using her super a lot more often after the first one. Mandy defeats the boss in 1 minute and 20 seconds, and so she gets 50th place, which suggests her over overall DPS output throughout an entire match isn't very high. Next is the survival test. Mandy doesn't have a lot of HP, but her hard candy star power weakens each attack from the sniper bot. She has no healing abilities, so she only survives for 14 seconds, which puts her in 43rd place. Next we have the auto aim test. Mandy has a lot of range, but her projectile speed is actually pretty slow. Her in my sights star power helps a little bit, but she's only able to hit Nita from three tiles away by auto aiming. At 1,800 damage, that is enough for 42nd place. Next is the three attacks attack kill test. None of Mandy's abilities can boost the damage from her attack, but she still deals a good amount of damage compared to other brawlers that have similar ranges. She deals 5,400 damage with three attacks, which is enough to take out 41 of the brawlers in the game and get her 42nd place. Next is the splash test. Mandy uses her first two gadgets to help her break open the first few boxes, and once she grabs some power cubes, she can then use her super and almost break the rest of the boxes, and then she's able to use her last gadget to clean them up. She completes the splash test in 23 seconds, 
and that puts her in 39th place. Next, we have the race test. Now, Mandy has no abilities to speed her up or move her forward, and she just has a regular normal movement speed. So she finishes in 12.3 seconds and ties with 24 other brawlers for 39th place. Next is the assassin test. Mandy unloads all three of her shots as well as her super, which actually takes a while to fire and cool down. She's unable to reload a fourth shot in time, so she deals 9,150 damage in total and gets the 37th place in those three seconds. Next is the one second DPS. Mandy actually has to fire one attack before using her super because her super has such a long cooldown time that she doesn't even have enough time to fire one attack in the same second that she fires her super in. She deals 5,550 damage and gets 35th place. Next is the reload test, and Mandy's attack does seem to have a little bit of a delay when she shoots it, kind of similar to like Ash's attack. And like most sharpshooters, her reload speed isn't that great either. She completes the reload test in 20.7 seconds, which puts her in 34th place, which is actually kind of average in comparison to all the brawlers. The rest of these tests are ones that Mandy beats over half of the brawlers in. And the next one is the swarm test. Mandy's super is just wide enough to where she can hit two rows of bots at the same time. She easily recharges it and then fires the next super on the next two rows of bots. Now I tried to use her gadget, but it wasn't wide enough to hit two rows, so two supers is the way to go. Mandy defeats the swarm in 3.8 seconds and ties with Shelly for 23rd place. Next is the area test. Mandy's able to break 24 skulls with her main attack, but only if she's focused. Her super also covers two rows of skulls, but it travels much further. She's able to break 104 skulls in total, which puts her in 18th place. Next is the super damage test, and Mandy's super deals a whopping 3,750 damage to everything it hits, so it can really deal some insane damage depending on how many targets you have lined up. She gets 17th place in this test, and she has a high damaging super. Next is the attack range test. While Mandy is moving, her attack reaches 9 tiles, but when she's focused, it increases to 12 tiles. In case you're curious, that is the longest attack in the game without the help of gadgets or star powers or other unique abilities. And to give you a frame of reference, that actually ties her with Spike for fifth longest attack range in the game, which is actually pretty crazy considering the fact that Spike's attack just like is kind of, I mean, it's crazy long. And finally, we've got the super range test, Mandy's best test. And I had to create a new map for this because Mandy's super just keeps going and going and going. It travels 40 times exactly, which happens to be the same distance of BB's super. So Mandy actually ties with BB for second place, and if you remember, Nani is actually the number one brawler for a super range test. Now that we've got a better idea of Mandy's stats, let's talk about how, how good is this new brawler going to be. Standing still, is that a is that a good mechanic? First up, we got gem grab, and I could see Mandy being a good brawler for gem grab just because her range is so far that it will be easy for her to stay out of dangerous places. Her gadgets and especially her super are some very good abilities for taking out enemy gem carriers and like we'll have to see how standing still works but i think a tier for gem grab makes sense but i do not think she's going to be very good for brawl ball i'm going to put her in a c tier for brawl ball she's just not going to be good for it because there's so many close range brawlers that in this mode and her attacks and reload speed are a little bit too slow for that i could see her super being really good for taking out enemies that are in front of a goal but other than that she doesn't have any abilities that are particularly good for this mode next is heist and manny's reload speed and cooldown times are too slow for her to be top tier in heist. However, her attacks are actually pretty strong and she's able to hit the safe from 12 tiles away if she can find a safe spot to stand still. And in that range, nobody's gonna be able to outrange her. They're not gonna be able to hit her, right? Her super can also go through anything and deal lots of damage to the safe. So she can actually hit the safe from across the other side of the map, which is like actually like a reasonable way to actually use her super. It kind of makes sense to do so. I'm gonna give her a solid B tier for heist. Next we got Bounty and she's absolutely going to be good in Bounty. S tier brawler, no questions asked, right? If there's any mode where she is going to do well, it's going to be one where long range brawlers are actually thriving because she is one of the few brawlers that can actually outrange long range brawlers. Also, these long range brawlers aren't going to have a bunch of health. She can actually one shot a lot of them with her super. If Mandy actually had some sort of an ability to allow her to jump out of a tight spot or dodge strong attack, she'd probably be the best brawler in this game mode. Even without that though, I think she can absolutely be S tier for bounty. As for hot zone, I don't think she's going to be that great. Like aiming her super through a zone will probably make her an easy hit. And I think she'll be really good at getting enemies out of the zone, but I don't think she's going to be very good at staying inside the zone since you can't really afford to just ever stand still inside the hot zone. So B tier makes sense for that. Next is knockout and off. Seriously, I think I feel like Mandy was made for knockout. Her focusing mechanic will be best used in this game mode and both of her gadgets will be very useful as well. And don't even get me started with how strong her super is going to be for this game mode. She absolutely deserves S tier for knockout. Next, we have solo showdown and Mandy's range will make her a pretty decent 
brawler for this mode, but like I mentioned in Bounty, the fact that she has no ability to escape surprise attacks or assassins or anything like that kind of prevents her from doing incredibly well in, in solo showdown. I feel like B tier is pretty right for her, but duo showdown, I think a little bit better. A tier seems to make sense. It probably actually won't be that much different for her, but hopefully she'll have a teammate that can be able to like kind of cl stay close to her and deal with those close range brawlers. And also I think it's more likely that she'll be able to actually hit multiple enemies with her super, even if it's unlikely to happen off the screen. I could see an argument made for B tier for her, but I'm going to say A tier for her. As for whether or not standing still is actually going to be good, we'll have to wait and see exactly how strong she is with that. It's, it's a very weird uh, mechanic added. I, and honestly, I could see Supercell tweaking it a little bit, but um, I don't know. Time will tell. She's, she's interesting. Either way, I want to know what your guys' thoughts are. So let me know in the comment section below. And we've got uh, the rest of Mandy's voice lines, which are actually kind of funny. <laughs> like burnt syrup. Ugh. Don't touch my candies, Chester. Ugh. No special candy for you. Oh, where's Chester when I need him? Moldy mints. Cruddy caramel. Lousy licorice. Stupid sprinkles. Oh, gumballs. Ugh. Hands off my sweets. Next time, it'll be Chester. Ha! <laughs> mean like a jelly bean. Smackdown in Candy Town. Lollipop drop. <laughs> Like taking candy from a baby. Aw, too sour for ya? Ha <laughs> ha! Sugar high! Suck on that! Sweet and sour, taste my power! Sugary sweet and hard to beat! I want tough cookie! <laughs> like a kid in a candy store! <laughs> Come on, people, get a move on! Free candy! Try my special candy! <laughs> One taste is all it takes! Sweet like candy, <laughs> not Mandy is my name. Sweetness ain't my game. Uh, sugar blast, sugar rush crush. Time for a 